Okay, so now we have six shower in the bowl. Um, for anybody that knows me, knows that for me, shower is the number one koi variety and the most interesting of koi varieties. Um, I think shower particularly, um, if you're talking about buying toe size shower, I think shower is possibly the best opportunity to get something very good for a less price than it should be. Um, in that I mean that there's more chance of something very special happening that was less predictable than with Sankei and Kahaku. Um, because of the development of the Sumi over a period of time. Um, is that something you would agree with, Mike? Or, or? Um, I think maybe with cheap shower or shower with patterns that maybe aren't that good, maybe you can get lucky because Sumi will come up where you don't expect it to and it can make you perhaps feel like you've got a koi as an older fish that you could never have possibly afforded if you knew it was going to become that. So I think in that regard, I'd agree with you. But likewise, I think if you buy an expensive show, I think it's very, very easy to buy something that you think, you know what, this has cost me an absolute fortune, but it's got so much potential. And I think in that circumstance, you can quite often come unstuck with shower. Um, so it's kind of two sides to it, really, I think. Um, they are a tricky variety to get right. And likewise, I think even the breeders in many cases can maybe make mistakes by selling something cheap that perhaps actually worked out really good or potentially would unbeknown to him. Um, and likewise, they can have something that they think is really fantastic, price it accordingly, and then maybe it just doesn't actually make the grade, as it were, or something goes wrong with it. Um, so it is really, really difficult. So we've got six shower in a bowl here. Um, shower body different to Sankei and Kahaku body? Um, kind of, yeah, I think shower is kind of more akin, I think, to Shirazuri and body type in a lot of cases. Um, but it does, I think, depend on breeder. Um, a lot of them don't have the same kind of strength of frame, um, can become a little bit on the fat side, a little bit chunky, but uh, they also tend not really to have that kind of same thickness of backbone that you might see in Kahaku, so they can be a little bit harder to read. You can quite often buy shower whereby the body doesn't work out the way that you thought it would. Um, so in that regard, I think, yeah, the body type is different. So what are the, some, of the some of the things that you, you look for um, differently in Showa, for example, um, compared to when you're selecting uh, Sankei or Kahaku? Um, for me, with Showa, I'm kind of looking for something whereby maybe the actual Kahaku pattern doesn't really matter so much because I think it is the Sumi placement that will make or break it. Quite often you can find Showa that um, have got a perfect pattern, really, really attractive, but the trouble is, the very nature of the beast is, you've bought the koi, you've got the fantastic kahaku pattern. When the sumi comes up, you can end up with basically no white ground left. Um, or maybe all the sumi can come up on top of the red, which you and I both know is absolutely hopeless um, and of no value whatsoever. Showa is essentially all about sumi. Um, so you need to be able to show that sumi off. It needs to be able to stand on its own ground and, and show you just how good that sumi is. A shower whereby the sumi looks amazing on the red and lousy on the white is of actually no value whatsoever. The sumi quality has got to be extremely good on white ground where it doesn't have the colour there to kind of act almost like an undercoat or a primer for the, to make the sumi looking good. Um, and for that matter, I think you'll find that a lot of showa um, people will look um, look at the fish and say, oh yeah, the sumi's quali quality is fantastic, but the sumi is actually just on the red, red ground. You do need to kind of ascertain that where that sumi looks good, it is actually on white ground to actually take the fish as being a good example. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I, I repeatedly, repeatedly say to people um, and try and emphasize to people about quality sumi has to appear on the white ground. And it's something that, it's not just, just you saying it and me saying it, it's something that the breeders in honesty will always say and the number of fish that you say, uh, people think look good or you say, oh, that's nice. And the, the breeders say, yeah, but the, the sumi's on the red ground, it's not on the white ground. Yeah. So it, it is a, it's not a, a myth, it's not a, just something that we talk about. It is very much definitely a fact with, with Showa and Sankei um, that quality sumi appears on the white ground. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree more. I think in some cases, I think maybe a breeder of shower is perhaps maybe overselling the fish. They're saying, oh yeah, this is fantastic, and oh, it's got a fantastic future, and oh look, you know, um, the sumi's really good, but there's no sumi on the white ground to speak of. 
um, you might then talk to another shower breeder that might show you the same fish that he has and they'll express, and, and I'm sure they have to, done to you Mark, they'll express to you just how disappointed they are with those fish that they've bred because the sumi quality is no good, the sumi placement's no good um, and I've had it quite often, more so with shower than any other variety where a breeder would say to me, oh you know what, this year my shower are no good, the body's no good or the sumi's no good or the colour's no good or the key was no good. Um, and they'll be almost kind of despondent, like, you know, oh, well, I tried again, I love shower, I tried again, but this year is no good again. So maybe next year the shower are going to be better. Um, and in this instance, in this particular case, these shower, um, four of them are from Takigawa Koi Farm. And it's actually the first time that he's really been enthusiastic about his shower in a number of years when I've been going there. Um, before, he's always had things that he's not been really happy about, but these shower are the first ones that, in several years, that he's actually been excited about showing me. Um, and I think this year are very good. Um, two of those fish are from Matsui Koi Farm, um, and whilst they might be attractive, um, they're not necessarily the same level. Um, now, moving on with this, I think body, I think, is particularly important with shower. But also harder to understand but i think and i'm sure you'd agree with me mark that i think this fish has got the best body um, of the ones present in this bowl um, in terms of the kind of thickness of the body the height profile of the body the belly line of the body and how thick it is into the tail tube i think this one oops overall i think is the best in terms of its body um, what's your opinion yeah yeah for me uh, that particular fish in in, in Overall, is the number one fish in the bowl um, for a number of aspects. Um, but yes, uh, the frame and everything is, is, is very good on it. Price-wise, it's far from the most expensive. So from that respect, the breeder doesn't regard it as being that good. But I would actually agree with you. For me, it's a particularly interesting one. It's kind of sparse as far as Kahaku pattern goes. There's not really enough pattern there. But the Sumi placement is almost entirely, I think, going to leave that Kahaku pattern alone and that sumi later on is going to be what makes the fish. So I think this is one of those fish that you mentioned, is that fish that maybe will grow up and surprise the owner, and effectively they would have bought a fish that they would never have been able to afford as a bigger fish. And I think this kind of falls into that category. Um, the number one fish in this instance, certainly according to the breeder, in this case Takigawa, is this one. Um, and I think overall it is the number one fish as an overall package. It doesn't have the same kind of strength of body that this one's got. Um, but the Kahaku pattern's best. Um, the Sumi pattern, I think, when the Sumi's up, although a lot of it will be on the red, um, I think this, there is still going to be Sumi coming up on the white ground. And I think when that Sumi is up, it will allow some white skin to still show there. So it's still going to to look attractive and it will still have enough white ground there. If we can just put those two fish together, Mike, in the, in yeah. the bowl to discuss. Uh, for me, uh, certainly the, the fish that we see at the top of the screen here, uh, the one nearest you, Mike, Yeah. Um, it's what I would call it, uh, there's an element of gamble to it um, because if that sumi doesn't come, then I kind of would disregard the fish as, Absolutely. as being very disappointing. Yeah. Um, it's imperative for me that that sumi comes through. There's a couple of things with these that Takigawa was kind of enthusing upon with them. Um, and that one being, in this one's case, was a motoguro. Um, he particularly likes a motoguro on the fish, how refined it is, yep. um, and the quality of that motoguro. And basically, um, with everything being equal, that motoguro should give you an indication that in the future the sumi quality is going to be better. Um, in that regard, the sumi quality from this lot should be the best. Um, now, the one that you and I both think are that kind of mystery one that could come out good, the motoguro is not so good. Um, and also, likewise, you can see like the sumi on the head also is kind of a little bit, you know, unpredictable, potentially quite heavy over one side of the head. But still, nonetheless, fish like this, I can, I think, can quite often work out a lot better than what you anticipated. Um, so it's certainly worth having, but not if you've got to pay top dollar for it. Yeah. One, one of the things that um, perhaps I slightly dislike about the, the other koi, and the more expensive koi, is the, the, the heaviness of the red pattern towards the back of the koi. Yeah. And the fact there's no tail stop. Yeah. Tail stop obviously is something that people talk about extensively with Kahaku and with Sankei, 
need a tail stop, but also I think it's important on Showa too. I think also um, with Shiritsuri, I know it's completely off the track, but um, Omo Sako like to see a tail stopper white yeah, on a fish that's got no kahaku pattern, if you like. Um, they like to see a tail stopper white before you actually get the tail. Um, that it, in their eyes makes the koi more elegant. And I think in that regard with Showa, I'd agree with you. Um, that tail stop, I think, would make it that little bit more attractive. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, carry on. No, I was going to say uh, that more white ground, if you like, on the tail area of the fish or tail tube area um, would perhaps make it a little bit more attractive as well. Yeah, so I, if it was like four steps with a clear break, then perhaps, you know, it's going to be that little bit nicer. And I think in that regard, this is what you're kind of looking for as a similar style of pattern. You've got that tail stop. You've got another band of white, if you like, before the tail tube area. Um, so in that regard, yeah, this one's kind of a nicer pattern just in that area. So if we take this 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 one that we're both talking about now, um, the one that's a bit unpredictable, shall we say, what what are some of the things on it that, that give us hope what that the Sumi's going to come good? Um, that's a good question. Um, but one thing that I think is reasonably promising is that although you've got some Sumi that's on top of the red, what kind of makes it for me a little bit more promising than it would do otherwise is the fact that that Sumi isn't glossy on the red. If that Sumi was thick and black on the red, let's say like this one, then I wouldn't really hold out much for much hope on the Sumi that was on the white areas. And so that to me gives me a little bit of a glimmer of hope that hopefully the Sumi will come in general. Um, and I think if and when the Sumi does come, you will still get various areas of white, bands of white. So you'll get a very good balance between the three colors on this fish later on. And if that Sumi does all come up, even if it completely drowns out this area of red, if that goes completely black, it doesn't matter because you've still got some clean areas of red. Like the tail tube, it's still going to have a significant amount of red there. This area around the dorsal area is still be kind of quite significant. And also the head and shoulder pattern as well will still be significant. So if everything you can see on this fish materialized as really, really heavy Sumi, and even if all of the head area and this side of the face went completely black, you've still got a fish, I think, that's actually going to be quite attractive later on. What we don't know right now is just how good that Sumi is going to be. But it's certainly a fish, I think, that's worth taking a chance with as a purchase. Okay, so some of the other um, fish in the bowl have much darker sumi to start with already, yeah. particularly the one that's in front of you now with the dark sumi at the back. Yeah, this is a different breeder. This one's from Matsue. Um, and you can see to some degree what we were talking about with the sumi on the red. Um, here you've got like Kage sumi that's quite grey. It's not terrible in quality, but it's, it's obviously very undeveloped. But this area here, and also, more so, this area of the shoulder is falling on top of the red. So people will look at this and typically say, oh yeah, the sumi quality is fantastic. But in reality, that sumi is sitting on top of the red. So the red is an underlay for that sumi. So it's making it look better than what it really is. What you've got to look is at these areas of sumi, the sumi that's actually on white ground and how good that is. This, I mean, it's not an expensive fish. Um, and it's not a fantastic fish, but I think it's a fish that people can have quite a lot of fun with. But ultimately, I think if everything came up, all the sumi came up on this fish, you've got a fish that's quite heavy at the back end for sumi, not much red left, only this area would be left. Um, and whilst it's going to be attractive, if you, let's say, drag the breeder kicking and screaming over to England and see this fish in a few years time, I don't think the breeder's going to be particularly enthused with it. Um, it's a reasonable fish, but it's not amazing. Um, and I think the same can be said of this one also. Um, you've got, effectively, again, Sumi on the head here is on top of red ground. Um, Sumi on the shoulder area around the front of the dorsal is on top of the red as well. Sumi on the white ground, however, where it's underlying, in almost every case, it's just underlying. There's nothing there. And this kind of Sumi, whilst a lot of people look at Showa, let's say on the UK show circuit, and say, oh yeah, well I really like Kage Sumi, so I don't mind. The fact of the matter is that this Sumi is up on the red, down on the white. So maybe it will come. And personally, I think it's got a chance of coming. But I couldn't possibly sell it to somebody and say, oh, yeah, when the Sumi comes up on the white, this is going to be great. Because quite honestly, I don't know that the Sumi on the white will ever come up on this fish. It's just a more reasonably priced fish um, that later on in life is probably going to be an unspectacular fish. One of the reasons I... I 
put this particular fish in the bowl was because of the, the grey underlying colour of the head. Um, head pattern very, very um, considerably grey. Mm. Um, have you got any thoughts on how that might develop? Um, for me, um, it would be a big put off personally. If uh, that Sumi came up, you've got a fish that basically looks like it's got a big black crash helmet. <laughs> so, um, there's no interest. I think if this, all this Sumi comes up on the head, you're going you're gonna to have very, very little white left. And even some of those areas look like they will be white, like say above that eye. There is that chance that those areas also, as the Sumi comes up on the head, you might find that those areas also become darker. And then maybe another year later, that will then become solid Sumi. So as you say, Mark, you could have a fish there that is just literally like a big solid black head, um, red on top of the, sorry, Sumi on top of the red there. Um, and then all the Sumi still underlying on the white areas around the rest of the fish. So essentially you've got something that, yeah, this kind of fish, it looks attractive now. Someone might say, oh yeah, the Sumi's good. It's gonna be nice. It's good for koi shows. But in a few years time, you might have that divide of people that look at it and say, oh, I like that fish. And then the likes of yourself or the likes of breeders that look at that fish and say, why is that fish at a koi show? Um, sumi is everything. And a Sumi where that sumi, sumi falls on top of the red pattern and not on top of the white with this Kage look is basically, in the future, is basically worthless. Another attractive show in the bowl is the one to the your left, oh, your right hand side, sorry, in the corner there. Yeah. This one, I think the fish is nice. Um, although personally, I prefer this one. I think with this one, I think it's good. But for me, I would expect to see this Sumi area come up quite solid. The Sumi area on the shoulder being quite solid. This area also. I don't really know how good the Sumi is going to be, but I think there's reasonable hope of it coming up okay. But to my mind, I think it is a future fish, bearing in mind that Showa tend to develop Sumi more so at the back end first and then kind of finish up more so later on, on the shoulder kind of thing. I think in this one's case, just imagining that all the Sumi came up everywhere that you think it will. Um, I think as much as the fish might be very nice and the pattern might be very nice, certainly around this area, it's going to be a bit sparse for Sumi. I think in terms of Sumi, the fish is going to be a little bit front heavy. Um, it still might work out very good, um, but I think it's not got the same appeal, um, let's say, as this one, which is your favourite, um, because it's going to have a much more even distribution of Sumi through the fish. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. If it comes. Now, this one, I think, is also, I think this is a good fish. Um, the Kahaku pattern on its own right is good. Sumi placement's pretty good. Um, there's just about enough Sumi at the back end, which I think hopefully will come. And I don't think it will become too dwarfed out by Sumi at the front end. So I think later on in life, I think this one will be good. Motogure is pretty good as well. Um, it's got some terry weakness. Um, you can see, well, I say terry weakness. This one here is kind of like where the pattern's kind of cutting in, I think, from this side cutting through. So you've got kind of an incomplete color on the scale because of that. Um, but some of the scales, let's say on this side, you can just see um, depending on the angle, there's a couple of scales here where the pigment's kind of incomplete on the scales. Um, that, I think, may fill in, and you can quite often find that with Showa. But likewise, you can have a Showa whereby the terry looks perfect, and then later on, it kind of deteriorates and falls apart. So Showa is really, really difficult to get right. And certainly, I think, with mud ponding, you can get Showas with weaknesses as toe side that you would never ever buy um, because of maybe the terry so weak and so incomplete that you just couldn't bear to do it and yet put that fish into a mud pond environment and you can find that it can improve so much and fix up so well um, later on. We've all seen fish, that, let's say as a young fish that have actually looked um, quite poor in regards to shower that later on in life have actually blossomed and becomes, it becomes something you never expected. Um, it does happen but I think it's kind of the exception to the rule. Um, Showa is just, I think, inherently extremely difficult to get right. But yeah, it's difficult to get right, but in some ways... Um, difficult to make a mistake with. <laughs> <laughs> in, in some ways, compared to Kahaku and Sanke, um, a lot more forgiving in terms of uh, pattern placement, yeah. um, the, the way the, two, the three colours work together. Um, there's things that you would 
in terms of uh, so the red pattern, for example, uh, which on a Kahaku or Sanke you would you would completely dismiss, and you you wouldn't give the fish a second look. Whereas the shower, the placement of the sumi can change it so much. Um, there's so much more variance in how the pattern can look on a shower and be acceptable mm. to that of Sanke and Kahaku. I agree, and I also agree in insofar as quality issues as well. Those those terry issues I've mentioned, there is so much going on with shower that maybe you've got some area of bad sachet or maybe like a little bit of secondary heat underneath the skin shining through or some key with it's not good, but there's just so much going on as a package that it just doesn't really matter. You can just admire the fish anyway because shower tends to be quite a busy fish. So while she might have some weak points that you could never ever tolerate with Kahaku, with shower, you can say, well, actually, you know what? I don't care because it's just so attractive. And in lots of shower is also the, the, the hope and the, the, uh, the dream that the sumi will cover up some weaknesses as well, shall we Absolutely, say. yeah, <laughs> there is that chance. Um, that, yeah, I mean, you might look at some parts, let's say this area here, I think, whilst it's a weak point, where that scale is kind of incomplete colour, there's every chance that the sumi here will stretch up into it and cover it anyway, so then it's not going to matter. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Okay, so in terms of uh, a one to six with these fish, where's your thoughts, Mike? Um, I think from a predictability, although I agree with what you're saying about tail tube, predictability and overall quality, I think this one is best. Um, body type, I think this one's the next best. Um, interestingly, price-wise, this one's the most expensive. This one being the second most expensive. But if I was buying the fish, I would buy this one first, and I would buy this one second, even though it's cheaper. Um, I just think it's just a lot more fun can be had from that than this one. Um, this one's more expensive, but also I think more risk of things not working out, whereas this one, there's more chance of surprise where something does. Um, so I think those being the sort of top three, if you like, this one I think is the fourth one um, out of the bunch. And then after that, I think it comes down to this one as fifth, even though the back half of the fish will be ending up a much, much heavier in sumi. I think this area of white, I mean, it's still going to be looking quite a, a kind of attractive and striking pattern overall, even though it's going to be kind of imbalanced. So I think that would be quite nice. This one will be that fish that you will kind of regard as being eternal tatigoi. People will look at it and think, oh, yeah, you know what? When that sumi comes up, it's going to be good. But... That is last, I think, for that reason.